Hey there! So this week one of the things that came up with a student is this issue of repeating ourselves as artists and I think that this is an issue that all of us deal with over and over again throughout our life cycle as artists and I think that that can show up when we find ourselves creating work and then creating some variations on that work but it's not that different and we can get caught in a rut where we keep doing the same thing and what we really want is to be able to do something kind of more radical something more dangerous and yet we're afraid i have certainly faced this issue repeatedly and one of the things that i found is that i had to get absolutely tired and fed up of repeating myself in order to kind of break through that conundrum. So I want you to know that you're not alone and that I think there are ways to break through this tendency. We know that it's a good thing to work in a series, but the paradox is, is that in a series we might get into that repetition. So I think if we think about it as, you know, staying on one idea, one big idea, one constraint in that series, and then playing off of that idea, different variations on that idea, and that we really want to get to areas of surprise and discovery. We want to keep evolving the work. And so I think there's some things you can do and say to yourself that can be helpful. For example, one of the things that I've found helpful is to say to myself, create something different, create different, kind of like think different in the Apple logo and the Apple branding or the Apple motto is think different. I think we can think different. We can also start different. So how you start a painting leads to the next thing. And so if you can go in and allow yourself to go into surprising areas to do something different in that next painting and that next painting. Even though it's connected in the series, you want to keep changing and evolving the work. So allow yourself to try something different on that painting within the constraint that you're exploring. So that's one key thing I've found very helpful. For example, I often like to work with stream of consciousness mark making. That's often how I tend to start a painting. And so sometimes I want to shake that up and start a painting differently. For instance, I might want to start it with rhythmic movement or a shape, or I could start a painting with a color field, a wash of color, not with the mark making. So you get the idea. Change up how you start your painting. So that's one key. Another thing that I found very, very helpful is to ask myself the question, what if? What if I try this? What if I try that? So that's also part of that continuing to change and create different moves on your painting surface. Another way to work is to start in with your non-dominant hand. Or you could try blindfolded. Or you could try painting behind you. All kinds of things to break up your tendencies in your gestural expression. I once took a course on improvisational theater and one of the things we worked on was to basically expand the repertoire of our gesture, each person's gesture. And they were pointing out, the teacher pointed out that we tend to have these kind of repetitive moves. And if we could open up the gesture if we could experiment with the gesture, and we did sounds, and we did movements, that actually can create some new work, new art, new movement. And so I think that's another thing you can do, and that's from improvisational theater. Other things you can do is work with new materials, new surfaces. If you tend to work on paper, maybe try panel or canvas or vice versa. Uh, use different media, that type of thing. And another thing that's just so powerful we all know about is going out into nature and just gathering in information and observations because a lot of times that will trigger something new for you. You might see the movement of an animal that might 
lend itself to your movements in your gestural expression. So those are just some thoughts. I hope these are helpful for you. I think that when we, you know, one of the things about painting is that it's filled with paradox. And so a big paradox here is that while we're working in a series and we're developing work and we're moving towards increasing surprise and, and you know, evolution of the painting, the risk is that we might tend to repeat ourselves. And so we want to open that up and create different moves and marks, even within the series, even as a series is connected, it's related and connected, yet we don't want it to be the same. So if we're working on 20 pieces, we want each one to be a little bit different, even though they're related and connected. So that's kind of the paradox. And that's part of what's so amazing about painting. So I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you found to be helpful with this conundrum and this issue of repeating oneself and one's art. Scroll down, leave a message for me wherever you are. I'd love to hear from you. Can't wait to see what you think.